Lab number four is entitled Introduction to Microcontrollers. A microcontroller is very much like a personal computer, except that we won't be using a keyboard, mouse, and monitor. You can find microcontrollers in a variety of places. For example, smart appliances, things like refrigerators or microwave ovens, where you've got some options that you can select on the appliance. In this course, we're going to be using a microcontroller produced from a company called Parallax. They're actually a hobbyist based company. And one of their products is called the Board of Education. It consists of a small proto board, the basic stamp 2SX module, a power supply with a regulator, and a USB serial port for downloading programs and uploading data. This basic stamp 2SX module has several integrated circuits, one of which is actually the microcontroller. This module contains a basic interpreter which can accept programs that are written in Parallax's basic language called PBASIC. We'll see on the board that there are 16 pins labeled P0 through P15, and these can be used in a variety of ways, one of which is as an output pin. Sketched down here at the bottom of the page is showing when that output pin is declared to be off, and we're going to do that by setting out equal to zero. The output actually consists of two field effect transistors, or MOSFETs, and they can be thought of as being single pole, single throw switches. In the off state, these would be the states of the switches, this one open and this one closed. With this one closed, we have zero volts and we have no way of supplying any current from the five volt power supply that's on our board of education. When you declare out equal to one, we're gonna call that the on state, and the top switch is closed and the bottom is open, and now we can draw current and have an output voltage here of five volts. One way to detect whether an output is on or off is to hook up a light. In our case, we're gonna hook up a light emitting diode. Suppose that we hook up a red LED from the 5 volt power supply on the Board of Education. We're going to put a limiting resistor here to limit the amount of current, and we're going to hook it up to one of our output pins. Here I'm declaring pin 0 as an output pin. This is also the symbol for a pin in the electronics. Let's put the equivalent circuit in that we had on the previous page. And let's take a look at the case where the output pin is declared to be in the zero state. So this switch is closed and this one is open. Current could flow in this direction from our 5 volt source. So we could write a loop equation here. Suppose that the LED has an on voltage around 1.6 volts. If I go around the loop this way, then you can go around any loop, closed loop, any way you want to, I would have a rise in voltage of VD on, which would be roughly 1.6. Current flowing in this direction would create a drop in this direction, so I'd have a rise in voltage of that diode current times 470 ohms, and then a drop of 5 volts. So the rise in voltage in the two components equals a drop. Now you can solve for the current, it's about 7.23 milliamps. It takes about a half a milliamp to get some type of light in, the, in a red LED that's visible. 10 milliamps will make it very, very bright. So this would be very noticeable when it's on. But it's telling us when this output is in zero state. Let's do the same thing, but setting it in the one state or on state. And that's going to put this switch on and this one off. And then I've got a loop here. And so the rise in voltage is 5. Let's call this just the total voltage. And that equals the drop. So two rises equals the drop. But that's just saying that V total has to equal 0. And if current is flowing in this direction for the LED to light, there would be a drop across both the resistor and the LED. So it's implying that the current is equal to 0. Let's write a program that can manipulate these switches. What we're going to do is turn some lights on and off and let them blink literally forever. The PBASIC program has to start with a line that declares which version of the BASIC stamp you have. Uh, we'll be using a software package uh, developed by Parallax that will automatically type this line for us, but you could also type it too. The next line is declaring that pin 0 is going to be an output pin, and this is the way we're going to declare it, output space 0. Then we're going to write a set of instructions in what's called a do loop, where we're going to have something happen and just basically loop back and forth. I'm going to call this routine blink. And I'm going to offset the commands here. You don't have to do this, but it does make it a little bit easier to see what's going on. This will be called the loop blink. And the first command in here is to say, uh, set the output pin 0 equal to 0. If you recall, that turns the red LED on. I'm going to leave it on for one second. But the timing inside our microcontroller is done in milliseconds. So I'm going to pause this command for 1,000 milliseconds. So it's going to keep that state of the output for one second. And then I'm going to 
change the output to 1, and then I'll turn the LED off, and I'll pause that for 2,000 milliseconds, which would be 2 seconds. Then we go back and repeat that again, and again, and again. So we're going to see this thing blinking on for 1 second, off for 2 seconds, on for 1 second, off for 2 seconds, literally forever. Now I had these comments that I typed in here so it could help understand the program. This is handy if you come back to a program uh, weeks or months or even years later to see what you had written. You don't have to type these comments. They begin with an apostrophe. In fact, I recommend that you not type them, but just type the program itself. It would appear as we're doing these things in lab that everything's happening in real time instantaneously, but the reality is that this particular microcontroller is operating at a certain speed, and it can actually do 10,000 instructions per second, which is pretty fast, which would correspond to about 100 microseconds per instruction. But there is a finite time. And there are some applications where you begin to notice that there's something happening between instructions. Now, besides having pins as output pins, we also would like to be able to put input or information into the microcontroller. And so we can declare some of the pins as input pins. Now, they also have to be at certain voltage levels, and there's an interpretation as to what the voltage levels mean. When the voltage at the input pin is between 0 and 1.5 and volts, it's thought of as being in the 0 or off state and when it's between 1.5 and, and 5 volts as being in its on state or 1 state. You notice in the previous schematic we had a ground symbol, but it was actually labeled on the basic stamp as VSS. This is an artifact of notation in digital electronics. The thing to note here that's very important is that these transistors that are here, these are called MOSFETs, have a very, very high input resistance, really in teraohms. If you walk along the floor or you shuffle your feet, you build up charge on your body, and just a little bit of charge into 10 to the 12 ohms, if you had, say, one microamp of current, you still have a million volts. Uh, you won't see a spark, but you'll just have a dead microcontroller. So in the lab, there's a series of instructions for having you stay in your seat and actually touching a grounded terminal on the oscilloscope or any object in the lab station that has a connection back to ground. This will discharge you. You won't feel anything, but we'll be protecting the microcontroller in the process. So please follow those instructions very carefully. The microcontroller that we're using is on the order of $50 to $75 to replace. So we'd ask you to be very, very careful in, in handling these things. And again, there'll be instructions in the lab itself. Now, how are we going to put a zero input into the microcontroller? Well, we use some switches in lab too. And this is a picture of a switch that's called normally open. And that is that you have to press the switch to close it. And when you take your finger off, it goes back into an open state. There's actually several kinds of switches. One's called normally open, another one's called normally closed, and has a spring loaded in the opposite direction. But the ones we're using in lab will be these push buttons that are normally open. So if I hook, say, pin 7 up as an input pin, and I hook up my 5 volt source, I'm going to put a limiting resistor here so I don't draw too much current when I start to short things, and put a switch across here. When I press the button, I force the voltage across here to be the voltage of the switch, and we saw that there's a very, very low resistance in the switch, so it looks like basically zero volts. So that gives us a logical zero or an off state. When we don't press the, the switch, then current would flow in here, but this is, again, a very high resistance on the order of 10 to the 12 ohms or even more, so there'd be no drop across here, and so this node voltage would be the same as the voltage back here. So we'd have 5 volts across here, and that'd be considered a logical one on the input pin 7. Let's do a mixture of input and output pins. So here I've hooked up two switches to pins 7 and 8. I'm going to declare those as input pins. I'm going to use pins 0 and 1 to detect the state of the output. I'm going to use a green LED and a red LED on these two outputs. What I like to do is write some software so that when I press switch 7, the green LED will blink as long as I hold the switch down. When I let go, it'll stop blinking. For switch 8, I want to press that one down. I want to turn both LEDs on and then off and then on and off as long as I hold that switch down. This is sort of like a vending machine where you're putting money in and some action is taken. A little more complicated program here. And again, I've got the comments typed out, but you don't have to do this. But let's just go through the program. So again, i got to declare the first line which model of the basic stamp I have. I'm going to use pins 0 and 1 as output pins. And actually, pins 7 and 8 as input pins. And I'm going to set the states of output pins 0 and 1 in the 1 state, which means the LED will be off, if you recall. My first routine here is to check the status of the switches. So I'm going to take a look at switch 7 to see if it's actually logical 0 or not. If it is, then I want to blink the LED. 
If we come into a response here that is yes, then we jump to the routine blink, execute it, and then go back to what's called check here. If we're to jump here, we're going to turn the LED, in this case the green LED, on for 0.2 seconds and then off for 0.2 seconds. I come back here and then I'll keep doing that as long as I hold that switch down. But now if that switch is not being pressed, then this will be a logical one and be the contrary of this command, so we'll just jump to the next command. And if that's equal to logical zero, which means we're pressing pin eight, then we're going to double blink. So I'm going to jump to another routine where I make both outputs zero, logical zero, which turns on the green and red LED. And this time I'm going to pause it again for 0.2 seconds. Then I'm going to turn them off by making the output pins a logical one. Go back and check to see that this is not being pressed and that we're currently pressing this. And this will just go on as long as you press the switches. So here we got a variety of responses for inputs that we're providing. Again, like a vending machine, you're making decisions by putting coins in, tripping a switch, and then getting a candy bar or, or whatever else you're trying to get out of the machine. In these last examples, we had inputs that were values of high and low. We call them logical one and logical zero in, in digital electronics. Inputs can also be assigned a variable name, and we can do what are called logical operations on those names, and then have a variety of decisions that are occurring when all of the inputs are at a particular state. First one to take a look at here is called the OR operator. I'll have two variables that have two possible values. They're either on or off, zero or one. In the OR command, if both are logical zero, then the response is logical zero. But if either one or both of them are logical one or on, then the response is logical one. Okay, let's use this to do the following. Suppose we modify the program we just looked at to blink both LEDs if both switches are pressed and to blink the green LED when only switch 7 is pressed. So here I'm just putting comments by the things that were changed in the program. I'm going to declare two variables X and Y and they're going to be a certain length or width in terms of characters and this is going to be one bit which means just a 0 or a 1. You can have longer combinations. And so I'm going to go back to my check now and I'm going to say that that the input to 7 is my x and the input to 8 is my y. And then I'm going to do x or y. So if both switches are pressed, I would get a logical 0. Every other combination, I get a logical 1. And then I would jump to the double blink routine that we were using before. It'll go back to check and see whether this is still true. If it isn't, it'll go to the next command. And if x in this case, this is pin 7, is pressed, then it will just go and blink the green LED. And that's how you can write programs. What we'll have you do in lab is type these up, verify them, and then begin to change them doing a variety of other things. So the purpose of this lab was to introduce you to a microcontroller, which has many of the items of a computer, one of which is called the central processing unit and memory, but doesn't use a monitor, keyboard, or mouse to operate. Microcontrollers are used for controlling machines through circuitry we call hardware and instructions we call software. The concepts that we covered in this lab lecture, and also in the lab itself, are programming in the language called pbasic, having commands that are called output, pause, go to, and out, commands called input, in, and if then statements, boolean operator called an or, and commands called variables. For our laboratory techniques, we're going to take a look at the layout of the basic STAM controller and the Board of Education. We're going to write, edit, and download programs in pbasic. And then we're going to use push buttons as switches as inputs and use LEDs as output sensors. Again, there'll be a quiz on this material, the lecture material, and also on the lab procedure itself. And again, we want you to come to lab prepared so that uh, the lab will go smoothly and quickly for you. And this is lab four, introduction to microcontrollers.